Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Canada. For those of us just meeting, yes indeed, my last name is Canada, and no, I don't live there. If you enjoy things like vintage, sewing, thrifting, all with heavy doses of sarcasm, and awkward pumpkins beyond the time of which they're quote, appropriate, go ahead and click that subscribe button now, being sure to turn on that bell for post notifications. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you just a little bit of what I thrifted in October. Now this is by far not a comprehensive video of everything I've purchased in October because I go to far too many estate sales, garage sales, goodwills, and outlets to fully put it all on camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take y'all downstairs. We're gonna set up so you can hopefully see me and some of the table. And we're going to go through these goodies so you all can see exactly what I found here in Orlando, Florida. So let's get going. I of course didn't forget all of my notes upstairs, run upstairs thinking that's what we were, and they were not. They were down here under the pile of crap. I've cleaned off my table so that none of the stuff gets dirty, er, than it already is. I'm gonna try and go in order of, I found it at this place and then move on to the next place. Now this is not all of it, this is just some. But I did try and pick some of the more interesting things. At least I think so. So we are going to start off with an estate sale that I drove an actual hour away to. Now, while in Florida, sometimes an hour away is just from the north of Orlando to the south of Orlando. This was not the case. I drove actually out into the East Boonies for this estate sale. They had some really great pictures. They actually had this cute border print that I could see clearly from the image. And I was like, I'm gonna go to this. <laughs> I discovered this after the first day of the sale. Can you sense where this is going? That border print was long gone. And when I got there, <clears throat> the prices were as if I was on Etsy scrolling. So a lot of the stuff I left there. But I did find some cute things that they had underpriced that I brought home with me. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know that most of what you're seeing is for sale. I have not put up most of it on my website because, well, tiny humans. A lot of work, don't have time. So if there's anything here that you would like to buy from me today, please send me a DM on Instagram. I will say there are, I think only three things that I'm going to show you that I found that I'm definitely keeping for personal use. Everything else is up for grabs because I have too much stuff. So if there's something you see that you like today, please feel free to DM me on Instagram or you can message my business account on Facebook, Backroom Finds, and I will happily work with you to find a good price and send it your way. All right, hour away estate sale. So the first thing I'm going to show you is definitely something I am not selling. I will say the nice part about this estate sale is that it was half off day. Thankfully, I didn't pay their high exorbitant rates. I did get everything for half off. But the one thing that I always look for at every single estate sale I go to, sewing books, always always look for good vintage sewing books. Is this one good? Not sure yet, haven't had a chance to read through it, but is it in good condition? No, <laughs> but I don't care because they've made it this far. I'm gonna do my best to try and get them the way home. So you can see here, it's like the little things all busted and wonky. But this one is called Better Dressmaking by Ruth Wythe Spears. And this one they were asking $6, but because it was half off, I got it for three. So here you can see the front cover a little six dollar price tag there that now i can take off but it's a really interesting book because she actually was some type of line drawer line dryest not sure and then she realized that it could turn into a career of like doing these diagrams and you can definitely see like these are not your normal ones so i really enjoy the fact that this is very clearly her design style This one is trademarked 1947 edition, the sixth printing. So after finding my book, I beelined to that sewing room where I was really hoping to find the lovely fabric in the photos and well, no, that was not there. And the ones that were left were really high, like really stiff, heavy upholstery fabric for $25 for a yard. And I'm like, no, no, that's, that's not happening. But what I did find was this. 
giant bag of trims. And while I don't normally pick up trims on like an individual basis, if there's a giant bag in an estate sale that all look to be cotton or cotton blends from the 60s through the 70s, which was the strong portion of this lady's collection, I'm absolutely gonna grab it. Because in this is all types of fun things. I mean, can you just sort of see, like I even found some like jean zippers that I don't think I'll ever use, but I'm gonna put them up on my website eventually. But you've got all types of gorgeous like cream laces. You've got them in the old school plastic bags. And there is so much of this one. I love anything that comes in very large lots because then it's more likely on my end that it will sell and find a new home because when people want the trim, they want to find a lot of it, not just a little. You just got some cute little ribbon. I always like to find this like already pre-pleated stuff that just saves you some time, some effort. I don't, I don't know, but it was in the bag. This is kind of cool and weird. It's like this very wide silver lame, which just like, I think it's just the stretch of the, the weave, but it's just, it's very interesting. It's definitely on the scratchy side and there's not much of it, but it's pretty cool. Cause it also has this like smaller, vaguely matching version. We've got lots of like cool inset. And I love this one. Look at those little hearts. So this one is like this daisy chain and there's a lot of it. Ignore the, the other one there, it's fine. But yeah, so this this huge bag of stuff, I paid $6 for the entirety of it, including this cute little jiffy stitchery thing, which I don't think has been opened. Like there's a little tear situation, but I don't think it's actually been opened, which is always good. Oh yeah. Giant zipper pulls. <laughs> One of them says pendants too. That was also in the bag, which I thought was really cool. So I have a silver and a brass one of those. So while I'm also in the sewing room, I'm going through the fabric. A lot of the fabric had already been picked over, but I did notice this little shoe box down at the bottom, which is always good because normally near the floor is where some of the best fabric is left over because people don't always go down all the way. They're looking at the tables, not always at the floor. So. I like floor bins, at least at this point, well, I can still get down to them. So in there, I found this really cute, it's like a, it's a very super soft cotton pastel stripe. They were asking $2, so I got it for one. It says on there one yard plus scraps, but sometimes the measuring isn't always exact. So I'm not gonna take them at their word, but I do like it, it's very soft. And if it would have been more than a dollar, I wouldn't have gotten it because you don't need more than a dollar for a scrap. Next up in the fabric room, I saw this and was actually kind of confused as to why it's still here, but I'm not complaining. It's this very pretty horse print by Springs Industry. I know this is a great look. I should do this more often. Fashion. So this lovely horse print, and this definitely has some yardage to it. They were asking $5 and I got it for $2.50. I also just love horses and you'll see there's actually another horse piece in a different section that I managed to find. It was just, it was a good week for horses, or sorry, a good month for horses. Next up in her sewing room, oh dear, don't do that. What is this crazy fabric? And I go, ooh, I want it. Butterflies, colorful, seersucker. And then I realize, nightgown in progress. Great. I love other people's UFOs. For those of you that don't know, a UFO is an unfinished object. So you can see here there's scraps and a little lace thing. It was marked for $3 because it's actually two patterns, but so I paid $1.50 for this. Also in that same room was another closet on the far end where she had like hanging table linens. Okay, great, love those. Saw this just from afar and I was like, that's Willander. I know that. <laughs> so I wasn't wrong. It is a Willander tablecloth. Only one small, just tiny, tiny little issue. Hi. Am I pretty? I don't know what happened to this poor thing, but yeah. So I guess I'm gonna be turning it into some kind of skirt. 
because that is a giant hole down the frickin' middle of it. I mean, it will get repurposed eventually. I don't know if I'll do it or I'll sell it as is to somebody, but I'm $3.50 into it, which is about $3.25 more than what I probably should be. But here we are. So after I had grabbed the giant, holy tablecloth, I turned around and on the edge of one of the shelving units that was basically butted up next to the closet was this weird little thing. And this, I think, is some kind of knitting bag. <laughs> or maybe just some type of quirky 70s bag, but it's seen better days, and I'm still, again, not 100% sure why I grabbed it, other than the fact that it's vaguely kind of cool. So you can see here, it's got little words, Foxy, Trixy, Tricky, Sly. Uh, the orange has definitely bled up into the area, because it must have gotten wet at some point in its life when it shouldn't have. And the inside is crispy. And I do mean crispy. And this handle was definitely broken. I vaguely got it back to the way it's supposed to be, but it's not great. Not great. This one was marked for $2. No, this one they gave me a dollar, and so I paid 50 cents for it. So I don't feel as bad about this because if nothing else, I'll pull off some of the interesting bits of this and repurpose it, or at least de shred it of its shredded innards. Not sure yet. So once I had given the nice lady at the front my giant fiber cord, I kept wandering, and I always poke my nose in the bathroom, just one, to see what it is, and two, because I can. And something a little odd stuck out to me. This crazy towel. But this thing stuck out like a sore thumb. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why I really grabbed it, other than the graphics are kind of amazing on both this side and this side. It was $2, so I paid a dollar, and I'm not really worried about it. So if it doesn't sell, it'll be an interesting beach towel for me to take because it's ridiculous, and I kind of love it. So after I'd exited the bathroom, then we migrated over to her master bedroom, where there was a line to get into her closet. I don't fully understand, but it's fine. I was, I had driven the hour I was gonna go through every single room. Well, while I was waiting in line, I noticed that on the chair were these like, hats that had been, were next to a bin, so I wasn't sure if they were associated with someone in the closet. So I was like, you know, I'll just go in the closet and then I'll see if they're still there. Oh yeah, in the closet, my daughter found this. This kind of crazy, cool, multicolored belt situation. I, I don't really know how vintage it is because, well, hook and loop fastener, but it's tiny, so it ain't gonna fit me. This will be one of those things that goes up on the website. Uh, once I think, I'm thinking 80s for this one. I really am, because it's that pleather, but it doesn't feel like the new pleather that you'd get at, you know, forever trifling. It's cool, that's all I got. So my daughter found that outside of the closet. We go in the closet and really there wasn't anything in there that I even wanted. It was just tiny and I just, I had to look. But I came back out and those hats were still there. So those hats, I came home with me. Now two of these are gonna be the same. They are the Oshkosh Bagosh genuine article hat. And these have a very wide range of solds. I have exactly zero idea that I'm going to keep this thing, but it is pretty cool and they're dead stock. And what I really enjoy, right there, bam, made in the USA. And here you can tell no one's ever worn it because there is not a sign of sweat on this thing. So there's two of these and then this, I don't know if this was an adjustment or what, but like when you're looking at it, Oshkosh hat, other hat, Oshkosh, other. They look the exact same, but no. Strawberry Express. Do I know what that is? No, no, I do not. But again, dead stock hat, same type of situation. Still in good condition, dead stock. Little wrinkly on this guy but I want to say these were $2 a hat, so I paid a dollar a hat. So even if no one knows what the Strawberry Express is, it's a vintage 1980s strawberry thing, it'll sell eventually. That's my thought on the situation. Now there are a couple of items that I've already put up on my website that are available from the same estate sale. It's a 1980s steamboat, which I can only think of as Steamboat Springs, Colorado, puffy teddy bear sweatshirt. And there's also a bird and tree wax print, Batik style skirt, 
that is definitely a straight skirt. It's got a waist of 30, which is always good. Sadly, the sweep is only 52, so it's definitely more for a slimmer hipped lady, but it's very pretty. And then as af after I listed, I actually noticed that there is an actual signature at the bottom that says Escalera. I have no idea who that is. I tried to look them up. It, there's really not a whole lot that I could find. So if anyone has ever heard of Escalera, that's a printmaker, please let me know. I would love to have more information about this thing. And those are both available on my website, backroomfinds.com right now. So another one of the places that I hit off this time was the Goodwill Bins, which I have not been to since the pandemic started destroying my world. So that was fun. And by fun, I mean, highly stress inducing and I don't think I'm gonna do it again anytime soon. So I lasted approximately 30 minutes in between a bin run, which is really not normally what you do at all. Normally you go like right when the bins are launched, but no, I wanted nothing to do with the crowd. I was going to wander away from any human that got near me, gloved up, masked up, had my glasses on, was <laughs> very clear. But the upside is, is that I did find a lot of really lovely vintage things. So that's telling me like vintage folks like me, aren't really coming to the bins right now. So one of the first things I saw was this cute striped sheet. This is a, it's not quite a vintage sheet. I mean, it is. It's like a probably 80s or a 90s sheet. It's still got a really good, nice texture to it. So it will turn nicely into a dress. I say it'll turn nicely into a dress because this thing, I'm not sure if this was just dog nomming on it or just way overuse because they loved this. But the upside, Wamsuta, always a good label. And that Luster Calais, so love that. But yeah, it has got holes actually everywhere. So I think this is one of the ones that is not going to be for sale because it's really damaged. So I think what this one is going to turn into is a lovely dress for my daughter at some time in the future. And here in Orlando, our bins, I think are still $1.89 a pound. So I probably paid two bucks for this. So I'm not really super concerned about it. Another thing that I saw, which if you were a child of the mid eighties, you will probably remember these. Geese. Oh, the geese. My mother thankfully wasn't a super strong component of the geese, but she definitely had her tendencies. But this is a hand crocheted geese apron. So I think probably the whole thing was handmade. I know this was all hand cross stitched because I can see all the stitching in the back. It's got a little bit of damage in the front because apron, hi, we all know these things. So this one is not gonna go for a lot. Also, I didn't pay a lot for it because bins, you buy what it weighs. So this thing definitely is, I think it's maybe eight ounces. So I paid less than a dollar for that. So let me know if your name is Denise and you love geese and you want yourself a new apron. Another thing that I actually normally don't pick up, but I thought was super cute was this Warner Brothers Tasmanian devil tie. I have picked these up in the past when I have an antique booth and I can just go pop it in there and people can try it on and see it for themselves. I don't normally do this when it is online. The only thing I will say is that Taz definitely has one singular pull and you can see it go right across the middle there. But other than that, he looks totally good. And I just, I love, I just love the Tasmanian devil. And you can see here, 100% polyester, which we are not surprised because it is a Looney Tunes tie circa 1997. Another one that I found is this cute little linen towel. And it, it, it's not used at all. Like it's never been used. The interesting thing about this one is that I'm used to, it's, it's not vintage. I can tell because the vintage ones would have had like the print on the bottom, 100% linen. So this is probably a newer one but it doesn't have a tag anywhere on. Oh, hi, just kidding, totally does. Tag house, 100% cotton, made in Italy, cute. I mean, we all kind of figured that, right? Italian writing, made in Italy, why am I surprised by these things? Now here's the part of the bins where I got very excited because at first I found this. It's a 1970s flare, girls, definitely girls size, like wool tweed skirt. Definitely has that slightly scratchier texture of the vintage clothing. But I knew when I found this, I was like, oh, there's vintage in here. Because here's a trick about the bins. When there's one, there's multiple. So now you're looking for lots of other things that are vintage because you know they're going to be in there. So this one, the tag is totally torched. I have 
No idea. There's nothing left. It's a polyester zip and a button on the side but it is way cute with the brown with the slight blues. And so this one I probably have about, I had maybe 75 cents into it. So not really the end of the world. That is a big hawk, holy cow. So now that I know that I'm supposed to be looking for vintage in the bins, how cute is this? This is the most adorable little hand painted horse wrap skirt. I love how you can see all the brush strokes. And I, I don't know what that signature was at one point, but it is long gone. But my fear with this is that a few washes and it's going to be completely torched. So I'm gonna be very, very delicate with it because I don't want it to degrade any more than it already has. And again, probably have 75 cents into this cutie pie. So next up in my endeavor is going to be another estate sale, which I actually have sold a fair amount of the fabric from, but I'll show you the pieces that I still have that I haven't listed yet. I thought I was buying fabric. I was not. I was buying curtains that had been made once and probably never used. How pretty is this? I believe I found four of them plus a little bit of extra yardage and they are long curtains. There's a full width of the selvage in one and then they would cut it in half so that basically they just used up, oh, so much fabric to make these, but it's very cute. It still has the little backer panel, which is the, it's the pocket style, no? I don't know what style this is. Apparently there's like little, there's little pockets in here for, I don't know what kind this is. But anyway, they're curtains and you could cut them up and make them into dresses. So let me know if you want these because I have four of them and they're long. So you could definitely make something out of this. And then next up is a, it's so pretty. It was damaged when I found it and then it continued to bleed. And then I got some of it out and then it bled some more. So I'm not sure if the damage was the damage I saw originally or if it's damage that I did after the fact. Unclear. It is this gorgeous Bloomcraft. I mean, it's, it's little shreds. So it would be like good for tote bags and appliques. Maybe getting creative with a vest or something. I don't know. And the print is very, very large. And it says on the side here, original screen print, copyright Bloomcraft. This blue is a bleeder, y'all. So if you want this, just be known. The blue is a bleeder. You can see right there, that's a, that's a bleeding spot. Not a super strong one. Oh yeah, the pinks are also bleeders too, but it's still very pretty. You can see, especially around the Bloomcraft where it's a little blurry. That's not blurry. That's the blue bleeding into the fabric. Wee. So there's a couple larger scraps of this available. Other thing I found was a super cute, hippy, dippy, trippy, love trim. It's still new in package. So, I mean, it's a yard and a half of navy blue with red love with a little peace symbol in the middle. Super, super cute. I think I had this in the big fabric bag that I was buying from them at the estate sale. <laughs> And they were like, how about $5 for the bag? And I said, sold, thank you very much. And the last thing that was in that fabric bag was this cute little kit. And this is to make a Patches of Joy skirt. And from what I can tell, this is probably for the short version of the skirt and not the long version of the skirt. But it has three different fabrics coordinating trims and an embroidered trim as well, all to make this crazy Patches of Joy number 100 skirt. Now, while I was at that same estate sale, I did actually manage to find a chest of sort. And so I opened it up because for some reason it wasn't open. And inside were interesting things. These were things from her grandmother's grandmother. Can you sense the excitement? Yeah. I was excited as soon as they told me that. So I'm going through it and it's the very, it's very standard things that I'm very used to finding. You find a christening gown, you find a little baby shirt. And I will tell you right now, I am not the person picking those up. I don't want them. Every time I find one, I can't sell it. I eventually have to redonate it. And so I just don't look for them ever. If you are a person that looks for them, loves them, collects them, Please contact me because goodness knows I find them all the time. Alexa, stop. Y'all, sentient devices in a house should never exist. Yeah, 
didn't need that today. Great, cool, I'm just gonna. Anyway, if that is something that sounds up your alley for clothing, patterns, any of this, please contact me. I happily try and find things for people on the fly when I can. Now, once I had gotten through the baby things, I noticed something. And it was actually this leg right here. I was like, why is that going to something that's long? Why does it look like a scarf? That's not a scarf. These are split drawers. Boop. And I was actually quite surprised to find these until I find this 1920s slip dress to go along with it, which I was sort of floored by because it was not tiny. It was actually quite large. Now I will, before you start coming at me, this one already sold on Facebook, so I'm sorry that one's not available, but the split drawers are. Now I will say one thing about the split drawers is that they do have some stains left over even after two runs of restoration through the bath. So they are not perfect, but the nice thing is they've actually been taken in twice. So you can easily open these back up to being a full open waist. I don't know, I haven't measured a darn thing yet, but I will I'll put it right here so you know what the waist is. So let me know if you would like these because they are definitely a little bit on the damaged side, but I still think they have a very long run in them because they don't feel dry rotted or they're not super moth eaten. There's like a little patch right here in the crotch, but it's not terrible. And if you can believe it in that moment, I looked to my right and I went, why weren't you in the closet with the rest of the clothes? She says to the mannequin behind her, this adorable 1950s dress and acetate slip combo was also sitting there. This dress, even though she definitely has some standing on her, they were asking 20. Now this estate sale I went to on full price day because they had beautiful pictures of these giant large scale Vogue's and I wanted them and I was the fifth in line and I did not get them. So I was annoyed, but I still made the best of it. You always make the best of every estate sale. Don't put your blinders on for just one thing. Go for that thing and then open them up and look around because you'll probably find other things that you will equally like, love. Like this lovely little number back here. The outer dress is all sheer. This is all a pin tucked front with this adorable little trim lace and it has the pink buttons to go along with it. There is the matching belt. I just forgot to put her on. And it's definitely, I mean, it's wrinkly. And the acetate underlining isn't that bad either, but I will say this dress is going to be quite small Again, I will put some measurements here after I take them, because I haven't done that yet. But if she fits this mannequin, that's not really a good sign. She's small, but very pretty. Do think she can find a new home. I do have 20 into her. I am probably going to try and get, because there's some collar stains on this that I want to try and get out, but she's lovely and she'll need a new home here real soon. And then during one of my trips, running around looking for all the clue things, I did come across a matching set of these. Now this is the last one that I will say right now, these are not for sale because I have already gone and purchased matching fabric for my daughters and my dresses for these. So these are definitely not for sale because these are gonna be mine and her matching dresses because I'm extra like that. But these are 1990s buzz sheets. Oh, hi, threads from upstairs. And they've got the little aliens and they're super cute. Let's sort of see it like that. I'm gonna do like a panel skirt situation but I'll explain that all in a future video when I actually sew the dang thing. And that's primarily what I found. Oh, wait. Did you really think you were gonna get to go through this entire video without seeing sewing patterns? Come on. Now, this is the one thing I will say that I acquired on eBay because that's pretty much my late night trend as I go through find lots on eBay, acquire them to my home. And this one, I'm just gonna do a quick flip through. We're not gonna do the super in-depth one, but I will show you that this one is primarily large sizes, which makes me very happy. Now, are these all 1950s and 40s, 30s? No, absolutely not. These are definitely 60s and 70s, but I will standardly buy most boxes if they are primarily bust 38 and up, really no matter the era. Okay, no, I, I, 
80s stuff I still don't really pick up all that often because I get it sent to me. It just happens in boxes. And the fun thing is that it also has ugh, this pattern. I'm so over it. But it had some older ones. Oh, I didn't open those up. That's smart. That are smaller. But it does have some still very cute things that are smaller bus sizes as well. Some doll patterns. You know, kids things. Jungle Jam. Cute. And that is what I thrifted in October. Let's head back upstairs. Well, folks, I do hope you enjoyed going through my October finds today. If you're a fellow thrifter, go ahead and smash that like button, being sure to turn on the subscribe so that you can see further thrift hauls. And turn on the bell for post notifications, and make sure in your settings that you allow notifications to your phone and or chosen device, because that's apparently the new way to be told that there's a new video up that I've launched, if you're not just looking on a Tuesday or a Friday. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and we'll see y'all next time. <sighs> wow, why did I say that all in one breath? And awkward pumpkins that are well past their prime. I went downstairs and still didn't grab my coffee mug. What's wrong with me? Yeah, you're just gonna see it today. That way the audio doesn't sound like hot garbage little bit of caffeinated life here and I'll be ready for this. <sighs> I didn't bring that down here. Cool. Son of a... No, I'm gonna go get it. I hear you. Folks, I do hope you enjoyed seeing all my... Mm, that's that's weird and st stunty. Stunty. And folks, if you all want to be up to... You all. And folks, if y'all... Uh, no, just start. Just start over. Use this one. Well, folks, I do hope you enjoyed... All of my... Uh, nope, don't use this one. Use this one. That was a rant. Why?